Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. And I want to thank Stephen for supporting us through a donation at support.greatdetectives.net. And you can also become uh, one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now we're going to get into this week's episode of Dangerous Assignment. The original air date, August the 20th, 1949, and the title is File Number 307. The National Broadcasting Company brings you Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell in... Dangerous Assignment. Time, midnight. The place, a carnival on the outskirts of Zurich, Switzerland. Two men slip furtively through the shadows near the slowly revolving carousel. They stare intently into the darkness. Triplis must be around here somewhere, Carl. Yeah, handsome. We both saw him enter the carnival grounds. Well, where could he hide? The carnival is almost deserted. You see, there is only one person riding on the carousel and... Carl! Carl, it is he, Triflis, right on the rod nose. Yeah, riding on the carousel. Good. We wait and we will ride right into our arms. He sees us. Come on. Hanson, drag him from the carousel. No, no. Grab him. Grab him. Yeah, yeah, I have him. No, let go of me. Let go. Carl, drag him into the shadows no. here. Yeah. The American document, Triflis. Where is it? I, I do not know what you're talking about. The one they called File 307. You sold it to Brunner, didn't you, Triflis? Didn't you? I... Yes, to Bruno. In that case, you will not live to spend the money. No, no. Go ahead, Carl. Yeah. Stop the... Oh, no, no. Not my throat. I, I can't breathe. Yeah, no. Exactly. Oh. More pressure, Carl. I, I, I... A little more, Carl. I cannot squeeze any tighter. Uh, it is enough pressure. Just hold it a moment here. So... I think that is enough. Yes. You may let him go now, Carl. You've seen him in such pictures as an American romance. The Great McGinty and Command Decision. Now, here is our star, Brian Donlevy, in another two-fisted portrayal as Steve Mitchell in Dangerous Assignment. Bruce, you've got the worst sense of timing I ever saw. You're always dragging me back here to the office when I'm right in the middle of a big deal. Maybe she was a big deal to you, Steve, but she looked more like a stacked deck to me. You know, some of these gals may start picketing you. What's this all about, anyway? That's what the commissioner is waiting in his office to tell you. Here we are. I have your passport and credentials ready when you are. Okay, thanks, Ruth. Oh, Steve. Hello, commissioner. Well, where am I going this time? Zurich, Switzerland. Switzerland? Look... I can't even yodel. You won't have time to yodel. Steve, ever hear the name Bruner before? Bruner? Sounds vaguely familiar. Who is he, Commissioner? I don't know. Huh? Bruner's always been a very mysterious figure, Steve. None of our agents has ever seen him. Matter of fact, I don't suppose there are more than a handful of people in the entire world who know what he looks like. Yeah, I remember now. Bruner's a sort of an international mystery man who sells information to the highest bidder. We think Bruner has file 307, Steve. File 307? Top secret document containing defense plans. Two weeks ago, it was stolen from this country. Oh, you think it's in Zurich now? We had information it was temporarily in the possession of a seamy little man named Triflis. This morning, his body was discovered near a carnival grounds outside of Zurich. Mm. Needless to say, file 307 wasn't on Triflis's body. No. 
but Triflis paid a visit to Bruner's villa two hours before he was murdered. We think he sold file 307 to Bruner. Mm. And I'm supposed to get it back from this international secret seller, huh? Great. Well, have we got any contacts in Zurich? One. His name is Max Raber. He runs the carnival over there. Just uh, one more thing, Steve, as to the danger involved. Yeah, I don't imagine trying to get into Bruner's villa is a habit-forming occupation. There's more than that. Other interests are also trying to get file 307 from Bruner. Naturally, they'll try to stop you permanently. Their agents may be watching you right from the start. Yeah. Well, that's it, Steve. As usual, you'll pose as a foreign correspondent after an interview with Bruner. Actually, you ought to find file 307 and bring it back. You got your assignment? Good luck. Steve Mitchell departed United States for Zurich, apparently on assignment as foreign correspondent. Keep him under surveillance, find out his real mission. Very well, Mr. Mitchell. We will try to give you a very cordial reception here in Zurich. Taxi? Oh, okay, driver. Kenning Hotel. Yes, sir. You're an American, sir. Yeah. On a uh, vacation, perhaps? Not exactly. Well, I'm a good guide, sir. I can show you the points of interest here in Zurich. Never mind. I'm afraid I won't have much time for sightseeing. No, wait a minute. Uh, yes, sir? There's a large villa a couple of kilometers outside of the city. Got a high wall around it. You know where it is? Why, I think I can find it, sir. Okay. When you get me to the hotel, wait for me. I'll want you to take me out to that villa. I will be very happy to, sir. Hello, Carl. This is Hanson speaking. I've just brought Mitchell to the Koenig Hotel from the airport. I'm waiting for him now. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't suspect me. He thinks I'm just a cab driver. He wants me to take him to Buna's villa, so he's after file 307, all right. Now listen, Carl. There is a Max Raber who runs the carnival. They might be working together. If Mitchell tries to contact Raber, you know what to do. <laughs> might be the villa you are looking for, sir. It is the only one with a high wall near here. Well, it must be it, then. Okay, here you are. Oh, but uh, I can wait for you, sir. Never mind. Very well, sir. If you should need me further, my name is Hanson, and my cab is usually in front of your hotel. Oh? You're quite an obliging guy, aren't you, Hanson? Sir? I'll skip it. Thanks. <laughs> Some joint. Looks like a penitentiary. Oh, there ought to be a gatekeeper around here somewhere. Lyle! What are you doing here? What do you want? One at a time. I'm Steve Mitchell, foreign correspondent from the United States. What do you want? An interview with Brunner. Go away. Now look. You cannot see Brunner. Brunner gives interviews to no one. Go away. Yeah, what is it, Cam? Well, this villa is getting better looking by the minute. What's the matter, Fritz? This man wants to see Bruna. Oh? I'm Bruna's secretary, Karen. Hello. You're Mr. Mr. Steve Mitchell. You're Bruna's secretary? <laughs> he should be so lucky. You can go, Fritz. I'll take care of this. Very well, Karen. But don't let him get into the gate. Much cozier with just the two of us, isn't it? Just what was it you wanted, Mr. Mitchell? I'm a newspaper correspondent. No. Well, I'm afraid you've come to the wrong place, then. Your boss isn't too eager when it comes to giving out interviews, huh, Karen? Bruna sees no one, Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, that's the general impression I've gotten, but I thought he might possibly make an exception in my case. You say you wish a story? That's right. And that's all you wish here? It was before I met you. I mean, 
A story is all you wish from Bruna. <laughs> what else would I be after? I do not know. Suppose you come back tomorrow, Mr. Mitchell. Tomorrow? Yes. I will tell Bruno about you and ask him if he will see you. Why, thanks. You'd be doing me a big favor, Karen. All right, Mr. Mitchell. I will try to persuade him. Until tomorrow, then. Hi. Is the boss around? The boss? Yeah, the guy who runs this carnival. You mean Max Reber? That his name? I'd like to talk to him. Where is he? Over there, standing at the shooting gallery. The short man with the gun in his hand. Okay. Nice shot. Thank you. I seldom miss. Oh? <laughs> hey, looks like you know what you're talking about. You, uh, Max Reber? That is correct. I'm Steve Mitchell. You missed the name mean anything to you? A name is for anyone who cares to use it. That's right. But these credentials aren't. Do you mind squinting down your peep sight at them? Put them away. The commissioner sent you, Mitchell? Yeah. He said you might be able to help me. You're after fire 307. Yeah. You any information on it? I think the person they call Bruna has it. Yeah, it looks that way. The guy who had it before him turned up dead near your carnival, didn't he? You missed again, Max. Perhaps because you're crowding me, Mitchell. Oh, sorry. Go to 25 Bolligstrasse and wait for me. As soon as I close the carnival for the night, I'll come. We'll talk further. 25 Bolligstrasse. Right. Only six hits out of eight. I am slipping. That's slipping? Look, Ray, but do me a favor. What? Don't ever point that gun at me. <laughs> 21. 23. There it is. 25 Brolichstrasse. Hmm. All dark. Unlocked. Well, Max has to wait here for him. I wonder where the lights are. Hey, who closed the door? What? In just a moment, our star Brian Don Levy returns as Steve Mitchell in Dangerous Assignment. The United States is now building the largest, best-trained peacetime armed forces in its history. Our United Services, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard are training a new kind of serviceman training him in the greatest scientific enterprise in the world. Yesterday, he was a man of weapons. Today, to a large degree, he's a man of science. Yes, a brilliant future in technology is available to America's young men in the new armed forces. So remember, the time for the future is now. Find it in the armed forces of the United States. <laughs> the National Broadcasting Company brings you Act Two of Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell. The time, one hour later. The place, the police station in Zurich, Switzerland. Oh. So, you're coming around at last. What? Oh. The head, it hurts, huh? The head, it hurts, huh? Hey. This looks like a jail. It is. Uh, I am Police Inspector Baumgartner. Police? Jail? Look, uh, I don't get it. Neither do we. When we found you four kilometers west of the city, I... How did I get four kilometers west of the city? Last I remember was walking in a house at 25 Brolichstrasse and getting hit on the head. One of our policemen saw a cab with two men in it traveling at high speed out of the city. He gave chase. The men finally abandoned the cab... When the policeman got to it, he found you lying on the floor, unconscious. Uh, remind me to thank him. Looks like I was getting taken for the well-known ride when he came along. Eh? Skip it. You say there were two men in the cab. Whose cab was it? We are checking that. Why? 
Well, I was just thinking about a very eager cab driver named Hanson who wanted to show me the sights around Zurich. Now it is my turn <clears throat> to ask the questions. What were you doing at 25 Brolichstrasse? I was sent there by... Hey, by a carnival owner I thought was a friend of mine. Incidentally, is there a telegraph office around here? Down the street. Hey, Mitchell, your credentials are those of a newspaper correspondent. May I inquire what you are really doing here in Zurich? It's very simple, Inspector. I'm trying to get an interview with a mysterious character named Brunner. Brunner. Hey, Mitchell, a word of advice. You are apparently involved with very dangerous people. It might be better for you to give it up. Oh? Well, thanks for the advice. I'd sleep on it, except it's almost morning. Yeah, you sleep on it, Herr Mitchell. Only be sure you're able to wake up. May I inquire what you are really doing here in Zurich? It's very simple, Inspector. I'm trying to get an interview with a mysterious character named Brunner. Brunner. Herr Mitchell, a word of advice. You are apparently involved with very dangerous people. It might be better for you to give it up. Oh? Well, thanks for the advice. I'd sleep on it, except it's almost morning. Yeah, you sleep on it, Herr Mitchell. Only be sure you're able to wake up, huh? It's from Steve, Commissioner. Good. I've been expecting a report from him. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Ruth. File 307, apparently in Bruna's possession. His beautiful secretary, Karen, trying to arrange appointment for interview. Just between us, would rather interview Karen. Huh? <laughs> he never changes, does he? Apparently, Max Reba, not such hot friend of ours after all. I'm still nursing large lump on head, which I collected at a dress Reba sent me to. What? I don't understand, Commissioner. I thought Max Reba could be trusted. I guess in this business you never know, Ruth. Oh, there's some more coming in. We'll pay Reba another visit this morning when his carnival opens up. In the meantime, I'm going back to Bruner's villa. We'll keep you informed. Well, this is quite an apartment you've got here, Karen. Much better than trying to talk through the bars of that gate outside. Yes, it is a nice apartment. Bruna takes good care of me. You know something? He should. <laughs> you say nice things, Steve. Sometimes it comes easy. I'm afraid it won't do you any good to look out the window, Steve. You won't see Bruna. Oh? He lives in that other wing, across the courtyard. Hmm. Look, uh, what kind of a guy is he, anyway? Mm, a short little man. Very quiet. A short man? A fascinating man to work for. I can imagine. Steve, mm. I talked to him last evening about you. He doesn't believe you. What do you mean? Well, he doesn't believe it's just an interview you want. Oh? What else would I be after? He's not sure yet. But uh, supposing you were after a story. Bruna's interested in knowing just how much you would be willing to pay for it. We're uh, talking about the story, of course. Of course. Well, that's sort of a tough question to answer offhand. You see, there are others anxious to, uh, shall we say, write a story about Bruna. They are willing to pay a great deal. Yeah, I'll bet they are. And, uh, well, Bruna knows a lot more about you than you think, Steve. He knows you cannot pay as much for it as others can. I see. Well, if Bruner knows so much about me, maybe he also knows that the story we're talking about used to belong to the people I work for. Yes, he knows that. But I'm afraid it does not make any difference to him. He says he cannot do business with you. Well, that's that, I guess. I'm sorry, Steve. So am I. Anyway, it was very nice of you to go to the trouble. I was glad to. I don't quite get why you've been so nice to me. Well, I... I guess I... You what? Well, I, I stay here in Bruna's villa most of the time. I don't see many people. And I've never seen anyone like... I mean, you were... Oh, I, I don't know what I mean. Maybe this is what you mean, Karen. Oh, Steve. 
You. You must leave, Steve. Okay. But I'll be back. No, Steve. They would not let you in. There's a high wall and guards. Look, I said I'd see you later, and I will. With you here, I could grow wings. No, Mark Sreba's not here. Where is he? I do not know. Oh, he should have been here by now to open up the carnival. Yeah? Where does he live? At 25 Brolikstrasse. What? Max Reber lives at 25 Brolikstrasse? Yeah. Do you know where it is? Yeah. I've got lumps to prove it. Thanks. Well, Mitchell, here we go again. 25 Brolikstrasse. Hey. Sounds like a fight inside. Mitchell, help me. Get these men off me. Mitchell. <laughs> it's the eager cab driver. Kai, let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Too late, Hanson. I will take care of this one, Mitchell. Hey, you sure did take care of him, Reba. For a little guy, you sure swing a mean lamp. Well, it's good you arrived when you did, Mitchell. Five minutes more would have been too late. You know, maybe I was wrong about you, Max. Wrong? What do you mean, Mitchell? I had you pegged as the boy arranged that hit on the head for me here last night. Oh, I told you to come here and wait for me. When I got here, you disappeared. I got taken for a ride. Maybe by these two guys on the floor here, Hanson and... and what's the other one's name? Hanson called him Carl, I think. Yeah. Why'd they jump you just now? They know that we're working together. That we're after File 307. They are also after it. Look, I'm going to need your help. Have you ever seen Brunner? No. But I've been watching his villa carefully the last few days. I think I know a way we can get into the grounds. Good. At one place, in the rear of the villa, there's a tree which overhangs the walls. It looks like a difficult climb, but perhaps we can make it. Okay. We'll tie these two apes up and leave them here for the present. And after dark, you and I will pay a little call on our friend Brunner. <laughs> Here, Max. Take my hand. I'll pull you up to this next branch. Yeah, Steve. Mm, thank you. Yep, we're almost to the top. There. Now, I'll drop down inside of the wall first. Then you follow, okay? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Come ahead, Max. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. Look, Mitchell. There are lights in that wing of the building across the courtyard. Yeah, that's where Karen says Brunner lives. We'll work our way over there and try to get in. Steve, listen. Oh, great. The hound of the Baskervilles. Look, Steve. A giant black dog coming for us. Yeah, I see him. Well, that just about cooks us. No, wait. Get lost, Reba. Huh? Lost? Get into the brushes there. Watch where they take me and try to get to me later. Now get moving. All right, Steve. Hey! Get away from me, you big lug! Hey, will somebody get the black monster off of me? Kitty's freaks over against the wall. Hurry up! This dog guts me on his manual. So, it is the nosy reporter. Get this timber wolf off me. Stop get the dog. Fritz, take this man to the room in the cellar and tie him up at once. <laughs> Who's there? Steve? Karen. They told me you'd been captured in the grounds. How long have you been lying here in the cellar? I don't know. Uh, half an hour, I guess. You should not have tried to come back, Steve. You're sorry I did, Karen? Oh, Steve. I'm afraid for you. Look, just get me untied. I, I cannot do that, Steve. What? Now, look, Angel. Fun is fun. Bruno but... would kill me if I did a thing like that. Look, you let me worry about Bruno. Oh, I cannot untie you now. I must get back right away or they will become suspicious. But, well, perhaps I can come back later. Come here. Okay. But make it sooner instead of later. I'll try, Steve. This is a great spot you got yourself in, Mitchell. Steve? Max, how long have you been in the next room? For several minutes. Here, I'll untie you. Good. I would have come in sooner, but from what I could hear, you were not very anxious to be rescued. Uh, yeah. Look, you know your way around this villa pretty well, don't you, Max? What do you mean? Finding these rooms in the cellar without much trouble. 
I told you I've been watching this villa the last few days. You're pretty short, too, aren't you? I, I do not understand. Karen told me Brunner was short. Don't let your imagination run away with you. I'm trying not to. How did you get in here so easily, anyway? I diverted their attention by setting a fire in the yard. A fire in the... Hey, hey, hey. you believe in doing things up brown, don't you? Yeah. Mm. Last of the knots. Come on, Steve. Yeah. Out of the side door into the hall. Hey, no guards. No, they're probably all fighting the fire out in the yard. Come, up these stairs. We'll try to get over the back wall while their attention is diverted. Over the wall? Look. I came to this villa after file 307, and I'm not leaving until I get it. Steve, that's impossible. We would be lucky to escape with our lives to continue the search for the document. That would mean certain death for both of us. Well, you get the scourge too easy. This the door to the yard? Yeah. All clear. Come on. Hey, that really is a fire you started. Come, Mitchell. It's spreading toward the front gate. It's our chance to get over the back wall. Hey, wait a minute, Max. We're not leaving yet. What? Look, that building over there. It's Brunner's wing of the villa. Steve, are you crazy? We cannot get in there. Why not? The door's open. This is our big chance, Reba. But Steve, I tell you... Look, I came all the way across the Atlantic to find that piece of paper. Come on. Anybody spot us? I don't think so. They're all fighting the flames. Okay, let's get inside. Close the door. Yeah. Bruno must be out at the fire too, Steve. Yeah. Brother. I thought Karen's apartment was something. This one looks like the Waldorf Astoria. Well, come on, let's go through some of these drawers. But Steve, if the document's in here, it's probably in a safe. You can't tell. Brunner might figure a safe would be the obvious place. Hey, what have you found? Silk stockings and negligee, Steve. Yeah, me too. I don't get it. I would... Wait huh? a minute. Boy, I'm really slipping, Max. Sure took me a long time to catch on. Steve, look. This leather case. Give it to me. Hmm. Someone's coming. What? Here, put the case back in that drawer. Hurry. Yeah. Well, Steve. Karen Brunner. Complete with gun. Karen Brunner? I see you've discovered my little secret. I should have figured it. You're not Brunner's secretary. You're Brunner. You're lucky, Steve. Lucky that I feel a certain affection for you. Otherwise, your discovery would have cost you your life. Steve, stay away from that drawer. Another step and I'll shoot. Okay, Karen. I lose. That's better. You were... Yes. You were getting very warm, Steve. So close to the right drawer. And yet so far. Yeah. Well, what happens now, Karen? I told you. You were lucky. I'm going to let you go. But you'd better go now. Okay. Well, it was nice while it lasted, baby. Yes. It was. And it would be something to remember when you're back in America. That even though Karen Bruner was a little too clever for you, she almost fell in love with you. Goodbye, Steve. <laughs> Hi, Commissioner. Ruth said you wanted to see me as soon as I got back. I certainly do, Steve. I got the cable you sent from Zurich before you left. So Karen, the beautiful secretary, turned out to be Bruner. She sure did. Steve, you let me down badly. Huh? Letting a woman razzle-dazzle you like that. But I finally figured out she was Bruner, Commissioner. Yes, but too late. Not quite. I didn't mention it in my cable, but... Here. What's that? File 307. What? That's what you sent me over there to get, isn't it? Why, yeah, yes, but... I... I don't understand. <laughs> you see, I'd found the papers and stuck them in my shirt before she walked in. And when I made a pass at the drawer where they'd been, she figured they were still there. I give up, Steve, of all the... <laughs> yeah. Karen was a razzle-dazzle artist, but she forgot the two can play that kind of football. I guess she'd never run into the hidden ball play before. Yeah. So long, Commissioner. <laughs>
have just heard the seventh in an exciting new adventure series, Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Dangerous Assignment is written by Bob Reif and directed by Bill Karn, with music by Bruce Ashley. <laughs> This program came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Welcome back. Well, this was actually the last of the initial summer run of Dangerous Assignment. It left the air after this episode with no plans of uh, the network picking it up. But opportunity came, and we'll talk about that next week. Now, overall, I thought this was a pretty solid uh, adventure mystery. I didn't see the end coming the first time I listened to it, though I think this is my third or fourth time, so I remember this one and the twist. But I thought they did a nice job in giving you enough red herrings where your mind would be going to other places. Like, was Steve's contact actually the villain? And all the hijinks that Steve got up to that you don't even have time to consider the possibility that Karen might be Bruner. I think the misdirection is really solid in this one. Bruner must have really been in love with Steve in order to let him go, despite her almost statement, because in letting Steve go, she's given up a pretty big advantage. When you're a criminal, it's a challenge to remain free to operate and to be this very successful uh, criminal agent. Having people looking for someone of the other gender really uh, puts you at a big advantage, which she's kind of lost, at least in terms of United States and Allied powers. Now, one thing that you did hear in this episode, which I think is kind of a hallmark of Dangerous Assignment, is the light touch use for uh, addressing the Cold War. Again, it's not as explicit as in The Man Called X. But, you know, you had the situation uh, last week where he really was able to work with local police in Portugal. But here he's in Switzerland, which is famously neutral. And so there's no thought of revealing his true identity or seeking cooperation because it's not coming. And then we have Steve's encounter with the guard dogs. And I'll just say that the way the dogs sounded was suboptimal. Now, it will surprise no one that uh, there are not really a lot of dog voice actors. I think the only uh, program I'm aware of that used a regular dog to act was The Adventures of Lassie. But as a rule, animal sounds are made by human actors. And sometimes you hear a uh, performance that sounds almost real. Uh, Again, not the case this week. It's a tricky business if you want to actually, you know, feature animal characters in a story. Uh, You do have things like sound effects libraries these days that people can use, but there's often a limit on the amount of noise an animal can make, and you end up repeating stuff. It's obviously not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, even though I do think that the uh, performance was strictly for the dogs. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, Now we turn to listener comments and feedback. Francis had a comment on our last uh, repeat episode, uh, which was uh, Pursuit, and... uh, Uh, Francis writes, the wonderful Ben Wright, a great radio actor, and to my mind, the best uh, incarnation of Peter Black. 
Well, thanks so much, Francis. And I definitely agree about Ben Wright being a superb actor. And I also tend to like him best as Peter Black. Uh, for our replays that week, uh, we did Crime and Peter Chambers, and we did Pursuit. And I thought it would be nice to do a couple of uh, programs that were, in my opinion, pretty good, but which, you know, based on numbers, you know, people were not finding, you know, in the archives. I didn't have a linking theme on that, but it occurred to me after the fact that I should have called it Peter Week. Now, uh, for Pursuit, I did play one episode from each of the three actors who played uh, Inspector Peter Black. But I do tend to think Ben Wright probably uh, did the best job. And I do enjoy his episodes. I'd love to have more of his pursuit uh, come into circulation. Though when it comes to Ben Wright, what I would really love to have more of is his uh, performance as uh, Sherlock Holmes. He was actually the last actor to play Holmes over uh, the New Adventures of Sherlock Holmes series that and off and on for 20 years with a wide variety of different uh, performers. And we only have one of his 39 episodes in circulation, as well as one episode in the uh, Tom Conway series where he uh, filled in for Conway. But I would uh, dearly love to get uh, more uh, a Ben Wright-led episodes, whether it's of Pursuit or of Sherlock Holmes. Either one, I would love to hear more. Again, such a great, talented actor. Ended up doing a lot of character roles, but a bit underrated. Uh, he showed, I think, uh, a couple of times that he was able to be a lead actor on a series and do quite well at that. Thanks so much for the comment, Francis. Now let's go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Jovan, Patreon supporter since November 2018, currently supporting the program at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for the support, Jovan. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying uh, this uh, podcast, please be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. And also remember to nominate us in the Podcast Awards over at podcastawards.com. We will be back next Wednesday with another episode of Dangerous Assignment. But join us back here tomorrow for Philo Vance, where... Vance, you're a private investigator, aren't you? Well, that's the generally accepted impression. Why? Well, right now you're working for a man named David Peacock. He's hired you to protect him and a strong box he keeps in his safe. Get him on the phone now and tell him you've resigned from the case. So early in the morning, I never disturb my clients at this hour. Sorry. I wouldn't call him even if I knew David Peacock or what you were talking about. Nice try, Vance, but it won't work. I have a friend outside I want you to meet. Please don't move. Interesting morning. An attractive young lady, a gun, and a friend. This isn't anything you can talk your way out of, Vance. Hold everything. Junior? Yeah? Come on in here. Yeah, I'm coming. Well, here I am, hey? <laughs> That's Philo Vance, Junior. That's Vance, huh? Nice-looking fella, hey? Huh? Hey? A curious fellow at the moment. This is a rather unusual visit, I might say. Oh, you don't know how unusual. Vance, this David Peacock you're working for, are you going to resign as I asked you to? I don't think so. Make up his mind for him, Junior. And remember, Vance, I'm holding this gun. How could I forget either you or it? Don't you know you should be quiet, hey, Vance, hey? No, I don't, as long as you ask. And if I'm not the... What? Maybe that'll teach you, hey? And in case that isn't enough, maybe this... I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.